What's going on? Welcome to this car audio install video. You may have seen my system components installed under the passenger seat and some of my other install and review videos. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how I build the platform where they are sitting. This is by no means a professional install. I'm just sharing ideas for the weekend warriors who may have collected a lot of things in their garage over the years like I have. Maybe you can get some inspiration along the way. There are many different ways you can mount an amp under the passenger seat, but the important thing is that it's mounted and not just sitting on top of the carpet. Not only for the equipment but also for the safety of the passengers since the equipment can become projectiles during an accident or the wires can short out and possibly start a fire. The amps will be sitting on top of this ABS plastic sheet. You can get them in just about any size or thickness that you need but this particular one is an eighth of an inch thick and 12 by 24 inches in size. These are super easy to work with and they're pretty cheap as well. By the way, check out the video description for links to the stuff you see me using and the components I installed. I put all of these components under the seat to make sure that they would fit properly and to assess the exact shape that I needed to cut out of the plastic. Make sure you measure twice and take into account any contours that may get in the way. If you need to, make a template out of cardboard first. We'll get back to the template, but first I'm gonna make quick work of these cuts by using a table saw. The plastic will be attached to these studs under here, but these studs are well beneath the carpet. So I looked around until I found two pieces of metal that I could bend like this. The plastic will attach to the brackets and then the brackets is gonna attach to the studs. I'm just using these lock nuts to do the job, but first I'm gonna temporarily attach them where they will go. All I'm doing at this point is transferring the exact location of the mounting holes to the template. There might be an easier way to do this, but this is what came to me on the spot, so that's what I went with. With some clear tape, I now have a window that I can write on and then an accurate way to transfer the holes to the plastic. And since I'm always looking for a good excuse to use my rivet gun, that's what I'll be using to secure the brackets to the plastic. First, I'll have to drill a hole the size of the rivet head on each of those two spots that I just marked. This was the whole purpose to that. Again, I'm improvising as I go here. If I didn't have a rivet gun, I may have just used a simple nut and bolt or even a screw. The whole point to this video is that I'm using things that are available to the best of my ability. I still have to make an access hole for the lock nut and it basically needs to be as big as the socket that I'll be using to tighten it. To make the holes big enough to fit the socket, I first used a regular drill bit to make a hole big enough for a step bit. And then I used the step bit until the hole was just big enough for the socket. Back under the seat, the platform I just made fits like a glove. But before I secure it with the nuts, I'm gonna place the components where they will go and then mark the screw positions on each. You can see here that I already drilled some pilot holes for the screws but I decided to elevate the line-out converter in order to fit cables underneath it since the space under there is tight. That also aids in airflow, which is a bonus. I went to the hardware store and eyeballed the hardware that I thought it would work and settled on some basic bolts and coupling nuts. And now I'm ready to install my makeshift platform. With it in place, I can go ahead and securely attach it to the two studs on the chassis of the car. Notice how I'm dropping the nut onto the stud. Go ahead and write, that's what she said in the comment section. And then I'm just gonna tighten it through the hole I drilled earlier. Here's the finished product before I installed the components onto it. It came out very nice. It does have a bit of flex to it, which I like because the STI is a pretty rough ride. So it spares the amplifier's excessive vibration. If I ever needed to completely remove it, I can simply stick a wrench right in there and take it right out. So let me get all these components installed and show you what that looks like. And this right here is the final installed configuration. Your own install might be different based on the components that you have. And as you can imagine, not all amps are gonna fit under here. If you plan your install right from the get-go, you might still be able to get to some amps and LOC settings, even when the seat is put back. I'm a fan of installing under the seat if possible because it frees up the trunk space that you would have otherwise used and because the amps are in a temperature controlled environment so there's much less of a chance of the amps overheating. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section. I know not everyone is a fan of installing under the passenger seat. Be sure to check out the other videos in my 2020 STI sound system upgrade series. There's a lot of good info in there for all car owners but definitely for WRX and STI owners. I'll see you next video. Take care.